I think most people who lift weights eventually develop an idea in their head on what they consider respectable numbers on the big lifts. Squat, bench, deadlift and the overhead press. Some don't really have specific numbers in their minds and just go big weight, wow, nice. While others have very specific numbers in their minds and might even try to reach those one day themselves, setting them as goals of their own. Something I see quite often, especially on the internet, is the goal of reaching 1, 2, 3, 4 for males. So uh, 1 plate overhead press, 2 plate bench, 3 plate squat and 4 plate deadlift. A plate meaning you have a 20 kilo plate or a 45 pound plate on each side of the bar. So a 60 kilo overhead press, 100 kilo bench, 140 kilo squat and 180 kilo deadlift. I think these are decent goals to have, but I think they're a bit too easy in general. And testing one rep maxes is stupid most of the time for everyone. Unless you're competing or testing one rep maxes as an advanced lifter for a percentage based program. Having 180 kilo deadlift while having 140 kilo squat is also pretty unreasonable. It means your squat either kinda sucks ass or you're a long legged, long armed freak deadlifter. So my new adjusted goals for males are a 60 kilo overhead press, 100 kilo bench press, 140 kilo squat and 160 kilo deadlift all for a set of 5 reps. For females in my experience, a 30 kilo overhead press, 50 kilo bench, 80 kilo squat and 90 kilo deadlift all for a set of 5 reps are pretty much equally challenging and viable goals to have. If you can pull these off, I know that you're an ethical, intelligent and an all around better person than the rest. That's that. Thanks for watching. But what about genetics? Right, I think there's a little bit more to this. First of all, genetics play a huge role in how much muscle and strength you can gain. But luckily, most people have average genetics, give or take. And the massive discrepancies only really start taking place at the very extreme ends of the spectrum. However, I think some people mistakenly identify themselves as average because they compare themselves to the very best. This is especially true on social media, where the top dogs get more attention and visibility than anyone else. The hobby of lifting weights, whether you do a lifting sport or just lift casually like myself, also selects for people with decent or better genetics for it, because most people who don't respond well to training won't keep doing it for very long. With that said, I think I can make a pretty good case for myself as someone with average genetics for lifting. Obviously, in intelligence, I am 500 IQ. <laughs> I've never been athletic or fast or had great endurance or even good endurance. I've always been pretty much terrible at literally anything involving running, so most sports. My standing vertical jump is about 20 inches or about 50 centimeters. Bruh. And I grew up as a fat kid until around the age of 16 or 17. But I've always had good coordination, agility, flexibility and strength. So in PE, for example, I was much better at things like baseball, tennis or ice skating. And while my large legs are a total nightmare for stuff like running and jumping, I'm much better at things like short distance cycling and squatting. I'm also pretty good at video games. Though boomers don't think that's a sport. <coughs> Point is, I'm not athletic, but also not a total kinesthetic dumbass. About 80% of you will probably relate to this. You have things you're good at and things you're bad at, although probably not the same things as myself, of course. Now that I've validified myself as an average dude, know that these numbers come from that experience. Elite lifters will probably laugh at this, and some others might think that I'm setting the bar too high. But I think these numbers are reachable for pretty much everyone with consistent hard training and somewhat smart nutrition and sleep for about a couple years. But what about proportions and shit? Well, yeah, your anthropometry will play a considerable role in how easy or difficult each lift is for you. If you have short arms, for example, you might reach a 100 kilo bench fairly easily, while a 160 kilo deadlift might take much longer for you. Someone with longer arms, it tends to be the other way around. Just know that everyone has their own proportions and people are slightly different, some very different. But I don't think you should start measuring your wingspan or femur length and then start decreasing or increasing your goals based on that. Just don't be an idiot. But what about body weight? Ah, yes. Pressing 60 kilos, benching 100 kilos and squatting 140 kilos is a lot more difficult if you weigh 60 kilos than if you weigh 120 kilos. 
tail lift doesn't seem to be affected by body weight quite as much past a certain point. So with our goals in mind, 60 kilo overhead press, 100 kilo bench, 140 squat and 160 deadlift, all four or five reps, we'll use this amazing caveat. You have to be able to do 12 clean chin-ups for any of these to count. Not half-assed pull-ups, where your forehead barely gets to the bar level and you use your legs to swing yourself up past the five first reps. For female lifters, I'd say five clean chin-ups is good enough. For myself, a 100 kilo bench for five reps came pretty easy. Or well, not easy, but pretty simple. I just trained it hard and consistently and occasionally deloaded it when I got some shoulder problems or something. Then it just happened one day in my regular training. Pretty much the same idea for 60 kilo overhead press for five. It just happened one day. Both of these happened in the first one and a half years of my training. 140 kilo squat was simple as well, but took three years to actually get for five reps because I was messing around too much with high bar squat and just lighter variations in general. But 135 kilos for three sets of five took me about one and a half years to hit. Deadlift is kind of a similar story, and it's definitely my weakest lift. It took me two and a half years to hit 155 kilos for five reps, and then one and a half more years to hit 160 kilos for five reps. Though, after hitting 160 kilos for five reps, I hit 170 kilos for five reps like a month after that. As for my lifetime goals, at least until I reach them, they are a bodyweight overhead press for 5 reps, whatever my body weight may be at that point, a 140 kilo bench for 5 reps, 180 kilo squat for 5 reps, and a 200 kilo deadlift for 5 reps. While not being fat, of course, so the chin up caveat still applies. My best lifts so far are a 73 kilo overhead press for 5, a 122 and a half kilo bench press for 5, a 165 kilo squat for 5 and 180 kilo deadlift for five. All at about 20% body fat at around 95 kilos, except the squat where I weighed like 102 kilos, uh, being a very big boy. So I still have a pretty long way to go for all of those, but I am definitely taking training very seriously again, even more so once the cut is over and I start eating more again. But definitely no more dreamer box for me. The point of all this is that I think it's very important to set clear goals in training, even if you're not a competitor of any sort. Though you should set realistic goals and slowly reach them step by step. And even if you set big goals and you reach them, you can always set new ones. And if you fall short on them, you probably got way stronger trying. Just don't obsess about stuff like this. Your opinion might be really different from mine on the exact... <laughs> Oh, 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 hamstring cramp out of nowhere. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? I would like to hear your views in the comments below on what you consider decent, good or really good numbers. This was actually a week where I felt and saw myself getting leaner again. My waist measurement is still the same, but I can definitely feel my lifting belt getting a lot looser. Also, I'm losing fat from my chest and back area. It's now 111 centimeters, so minus one centimeter from last week. Average calories were 2,930. Average weight was 83.9 kilos, so minus 0.7 kilos lost. Total weight loss is now 16.1 kilos. After walking so much last week, I got mentally and physically so used to it that my walking volume this week has been almost just as high. We'll see how long I can keep this up for. Gentlemen. I knew it. I fucking knew it. They're trying to stop me from walking, but they can't, for the walking is endless. And my average steps per day were 21,000. Still pretty damn high after last week's 22 and a half thousand. I decided to take a video of myself in actually pretty good lighting. This is just to show what a huge difference lighting can actually make. And to show that, yes, I really am a big boy and I do have muscle. It just doesn't show in my usual uh, videos. If you look at my back, especially, damn. My back is getting lean. My back is probably like 10% body fat at this point, while my front 
upper body is 15% and my legs are fucking 20%. If you compare a picture taken in these conditions with a picture taken in good conditions back in 2018 when I was at my leanest with a decent bit of muscle, you can see that I'm pretty damn close to being just as lean now. Now, I still have a couple more weeks to go on this cut before it's finished, so there will be a little bit more change coming. I've already extended this cut a couple of times before, but I think this is the real end line for it. I could still keep going and get even leaner, but I don't really see the point. And at the same time, I'm really excited to get back into training with some actual food intake and energy. That has virtually always been the reason why I've stopped cutting in the past. But this time, after 30 weeks of cutting and losing somewhere between 15 and 20 kilos of weight by the end of this, I think I've damn well earned it. In last week's video, one commenter asked for my pizza recipe, so here it finally is. So first I just kind of open the fridge, then I take a part like this out of there. Then I open the box, just like that. There's even a little plastic wrap on it, so you gotta open that one. Make sure not to spill out any cheese from uh, underneath it as you take it out. If you do, that's fine. Uh, you can just pick them up like this and put them back on. And here is then the post oven final product. So there is my pizza recipe. Hope that helped. There's also a cat. I made some small changes to my training this week. As you can see in my logs, I've listed some problems that occurred. Overhead press getting difficult much earlier than I expected, and my right shoulder being flared up for several weeks and not really getting better. So I made some changes to address those issues. I swapped incline bench for more overhead press volume. Incline bench was the lift where my shoulder hurt the most, and I need more overhead press volume, so I'm kinda getting two birds with one stone there. Then I'm starting to overhead press with Olympic slash starting strength technique. This is the technique I used for the first five or so years of my training. Only in the past year or so I've switched to a completely strict technique. But I've come to think that it's a good way to press if you don't want to ever get stronger at it. Just my experience though, maybe I'm just really weak on the overhead press. Then I'm swapping dumbbell bench for barbell bench to make up for removing incline bench. And I'm also adding dips and tricep extensions to add some more upper body volume without hurting the shoulder too much. Dips are a question mark. At some points in my life I've been able to do them just fine, at some points not. So this is a very scientific experiment here. Anyway guys, that is all I had to talk about this week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Cargo truck out. Godspeed cargo truck. Godspeed.